In this video, I will be testing potable aqua water purification tablets. The first thing I'm going to do is make some dirty water and grow some microbes. Putting leaves and grass in water provides food for bacteria, and larger protozoa eat the bacteria and multiply. One of the most common questions I get from these types of videos is, where do the microbes come from? And the answer is they come from the leaves and grass that I put in, as well as the air. Microbes are found everywhere, so all I'm doing is providing food, water, and a place for them to grow. Also, this is an easy way to get a diverse mix of microbes without having to go to a lake or river. After about two weeks, the plant material rots and the water looks like this. Now let's see what grew inside. As soon as I looked at a sample under the microscope, I saw a ton of microbes moving around. We can see microbes of different shapes and sizes. The bigger ones are called protozoa, which is a general term for large, animal-like, single-celled organisms. The tiny ones, shaped like rods, spheres, or spirals, are mostly bacteria. These microbes are called ciliates, which is a diverse group of protozoa. They get their name from the tiny, hair-like structures on the surface of their cells, called cilia. They beat their cilia to help propel them and create movement. They can also beat their cilia to manipulate the fluid around them. So after we have seen what microbes are in this water, I can now test the water purification tablets. First, I'm going to strain out the leaves and measure out one liter of water. Then I put one liter of the dirty water in a bottle. This water purification product has two types of tablets. The first one is an iodine-based disinfectant. The second one is used to remove the iodine taste and improve flavor. I will only be testing the disinfectant tablets since they have antimicrobial effects, while the other tablets don't. Following the instructions on the package, two tablets can disinfect one liter of water. So here I added two tablets to one liter of the dirty water. The instructions state to cap loosely to allow for a small amount of leakage, wait five minutes, shake container to allow screw threads on the closure to be moistened, then tighten cap, wait 30 minutes before drinking. If you use the neutralizing tablets to improve taste, wait 30 minutes before adding to allow the water to be disinfected. It's been 30 minutes. Let's take a look and see how well the tablets worked. And this is what we can see. The water looks the same. I am shocked to see things swimming and moving around while I expected them to be dead. Let's test the water on a petri dish to see if there's a difference. This is what a sterile petri dish looks like. This is all the microbes that grew from 100 microliters of the dirty water. And this is 100 microliters of the dirty water after I added the water purification tablets. As you can see, a lot of the bacteria survived the tablets and the antimicrobial effect was not that great. If you follow my channel, you have seen me boil dirty water, as well as use the life straw filter with great success. So I was pretty surprised to see the tablets not work as well as those two methods. So what is going on here? Does my experiment show these tablets don't work? Well, not quite. The scientific literature, as well as many campers and hikers experiences, has plenty of evidence to support the notion that these tablets do work. But why didn't they work in my experiment? Well, I can offer a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess based on prior knowledge and observation and is used to start an investigation. So why didn't they work for me? Well, my hypothesis is that these tablets do work, but the tablets are meant to be used on clear water, not water that looks like this. I think water that is this dirty is just too much for the tablets to deal with. Maybe there are just too many bacteria for these tablets to kill. Water that is dirty and turbid like this has things in it that give it this cloudy colored look. Things like bacteria, 
parasites, pesticides, heavy metals, waste, and other chemicals. In a survival situation, you want to drink the clearest water you can find and treat it any way you can. After doing some research, I found evidence that confirms part of my hypothesis. I found a review publication on iodine disinfectants from the World Health Organization, or WHO. The publication states, in general, the disinfection capability of iodine, as with all disinfectants, is reduced with increasing turbidity as microorganisms can be protected from the iodine by absorption to, or enmeshment in, solid particles in water. In addition, there may be an increasing disinfectant demand due to reactions between organic particles and the disinfectant. The publication also talks about the health effects of iodine consumption. Iodine is an essential element for humans. However, too much can be hazardous to a person's health. Consumption of iodine-treated water should be limited, especially in children and pregnant women. So it looks like I would have better luck in clear water, and I plan to do a follow-up video to this one. I plan to go to a nearby lake and repeat this experiment and see if these pills work better in clearer water. I also wanted to share this video to show how we can still learn from failed experiments. If you want to see when I tested boiling or the life straw in dirty water, or if you want to see what lives in the Los Angeles River, large and microscopic, click on the videos here. If you want to support my channel, you can listen to my music or donate to my PayPal using the links in the description. See you guys soon for part two.